should put on a little bit of makeup, but I think I just cried it all off just now. I had this epiphany that I'm just going to be spoilery because because that's that's what I'm interested in discussing, and and I listen to everybody else. Believe me, Rose I listen. Bud is a sled. <laughs> Rose I, Bud is is it's a sled. Sorry about that one. I had to let it slip. I listen to all those wonderful people. All she has to do is click her heels three times, and she goes home. There's so many people, and I always give them shout-outs. There's Outlander Pod with Ginger and Summer. There's uh, Marion Blake on Outlander Cast. There's Lonnie Diane Rich on Sex and Whiskey. And uh, there's also the um, 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 My Outlander Purgatory Sisters. And everybody has their own little, like, type of commentary. And Last night, the, I, I cried at the end when she goes in to see Frank, but also I have lost a, a husband, you know, so I've been in a room telling someone goodbye like that, but I just, I, th I you know, I think probably uh, there would be one way to read the Frank and Claire relationship tonight that felt like Frank was an ass. But I just thought it was so heartbreaking how broken he was. And, 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 and also, you know, how, how heartwarming. Now I'm going to start crying again. How heartwarming, how much he loved Brianna. He's caught because he loves Claire in a way. But he really loves Brianna, even though he knows that she reminds Claire of Jamie every second. Well, I do not know, so maybe it's stupid for me to talk about it, how it got started that Diana Gabaldon started defending Frank. Either it could be that in her, in her retcon of what's going on, there is no cheating, or it's just that her definition is that it's not cheating if they had an agreement. So it seems clear from, from, you know, the show, and maybe they got that from talking to Diana about it, that they had an agreement, but has can happen. Um, then you actually fall for the person that you're cheating with. And so I think that was part of his decision at the end, where he was like, well, Brianna's grown up, and, you know, it's no longer sort of a case of, a child custody battle if they get divorced. He's just thinking that she'll choose to come with him because she knows him better. And she did adore him in the books. He rearranges his teaching schedule and is basically like Mr. Mom. Now, when she hugs Joe Abernathy um, and she's about to run off and find Frank in the hospital, you saw her gold ring. The gold ring is Frank's ring. I think. And I need, I should watch that scene again because I'm wondering if they gave you a look at both her hands. She wears both rings. There's a silver ring and a gold ring. But maybe in that moment on purpose they just showed you that she still wore Frank's ring. I'm going to start crying again. When she said goodbye to Frank and said that he was her first love. I can't even say it without crying. Can we do the one more critical movie reference? Yeah, but you only have two bars of battery power. Is it still about Frank? That's the last thing on Frank. Or is it a movie reference that's not about Frank? Not about Frank. Okay, good. Maybe this will segue. Okay. Uh, of course, you know, one of the most brilliant filmmakers of all time, Lars von Trier. And so they always said Lars von Trier, Breaking the Waves, um, homage, which I thought was brilliant. Still in Scars and Garden Under, is you know paralyzed, and so he has his wife Emily Watson go out and have sex, and come back and tell him stories about. It. So they had that great dining homage to Lars von Trier's Breaking the Waves well, over the chicken it. cutlet dinner. 
They weren't telling each other about their sex lives. When he comes back, <sighs> I would, I would have and to. And tells them about his chicken cutlet dinner. Just oh, the way, oh, that. Okay. Just the way Emily yeah, Watson yeah. has to come back, right, and tell about her sexual escapades. Many people suspected that Ron Moore was going to save Murtaugh. Murtaugh dies in the book. You know, he dies on the Battle of Culloden. And the way, it just seemed like the way they were giving you Jamie's flashbacks of the battle, there was no way that just later, all of a sudden, he was going to get have some other random flashback and show that he remembered finding Murtaugh dying. So somehow, maybe we'll find out some other time, Murtaugh must have, you know, he escaped being killed on the battlefield and right afterwards and didn't get captured until later when they were no longer executing people. Um, but one of the other, and this is why I said it's spoilers, one of the theories of how would they possibly keep him alive would be to eliminate a character that was his friend in prison but was not anyone he had known before named Duncan. And... Um, and make it just make him Duncan, like just get rid of that character and make it, whatever happens to Duncan moving forward in the books, uh, make that be Murtaugh instead. Um, but big spoiler, Duncan, the character Duncan only has one arm. So ever the soon as Murtaugh showed up in the prison, I kept trying to see if he'd lost an arm. And I thought that's why they were kind of keeping him in the shadows and sort of like wrapped in blankets and stuff. Cause I thought like at some point there was going to be this big reveal that you would see that partly the reason that, that Murtaugh is ill is because he's had an arm amputated or when they showed like the bite from the rat, you know, I thought that it was going to be that then he gets gangrene and right then in the episode they amputate his arm. One reason everyone loves Murtaugh is because A, if you read the books you already sort of love Murtaugh, but B, Duncan LaCroix just so clearly took that character and just embodied him as, as a, a, a person that everyone just fell in love with. Like, someone not quite who was in the book, and maybe that was the writing, and maybe that was Rondi Moore and the directors, but whatever, everyone loved what the actor did with that role. And so I, I loved the way you first just heard his voice behind the pillar. And everyone who was wondering what happened to Murtaugh is going to recognize that voice, and I'm sure there were a few squeals and, like, you know, like, ah, it's Murtaugh, he's back I, there, you I know. I thought that was the rat's. <laughs> Everybody loves Lord John. I don't know of a single book reader who does not adore Lord John. Um, so I think there was a lot of excitement slash trepidation. Like, will... I mean, the guy had huge, huge uh, shoes huge? to fill. If he had any doubt before that, that Lord John was a big character... When already at one in the morning, you know, before the main public airing of the episode, he's got a zillion comments complimenting his performance. He's got to start getting some idea of how people feel about Lord John. Um, and like I said, there was a, I haven't read all of the Lord John books, but it's another series and I've read maybe three or four of them. So uh, look forward to outlandish Lordy Lord John. I'm trying to remember in the book if it's more apparent that he is potentially making a pass at Jamie when he puts his hand on his. I mean, I feel like in the TV show, they played it very subtle where... Uh, it, it slid by me until this morning with, yeah, again, the, the chess hand. Well, you were he, asleep. He, he gave away his hand with the chess hand. I appreciated the, 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 the dialogue as pretty much probably taken from the book, but I'd have to check, but Matt, Matt Roberts, um, Matthew, Matthew B. Roberts, the, the, the writer, that 
Lord John chooses his words very carefully. You know, I lost a particular friend. I mean, which is probably has a certain meaning, sort of like saying you're a confirmed bachelor. So he's sort of being confessional, but he's not, maybe not really. He could just mean a very close friend, a mentor, somebody admired. Um, he has no way of knowing why Jamie would just have a visceral reaction to somebody approaching him making a pass at him, a man making a pass at him. But I don't know that he intends to make a pass at him. I think he reaches out with genuine compassion to pat him on the hand. Now then I think, you know, he probably feels something, you know, once he grabs his hand and you see him just make that little motion with his thumb. I think the thing is in the books, I think Lord Don is the character that she wrote to sort of balance out how evil Black Jack Randall was. You know, Black Jack Randall just, you know, was obsessed with Jamie and wanted to overpower him in the way that everybody talks about rape. It's just about violence and not about sex. There you have Black Jack Randall. And then you have someone as noble as Lord John who is madly in love with Jamie but would never dream of forcing himself upon someone who's not interested. To see Jamie come out of his had it out of his stupor and start to smile again was just so great. And and the thing is, whether or not how however he thinks he feels about Lord John, Lord John is doing that for him. Lord John al allows him the opportunity to talk about Claire, which makes him smile. Lord John allows him the opportunity to have some fine food and some companionship with the chess, which makes him smile. You know, all the more reason that it breaks Lord John's heart when he sees that he screwed it up. Say good night, Gracie. Good night, Murtaugh. Oh, good night, Frank. That's what it's, it's good night, Frank. Sorry. Sweet dreams, or whatever that Shakespeare quote is. Good night. Sorry, you're on the super. And, 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 and what? And, and maybe there'll be a swarms of angels sing you to your rest. from earlier, I decide, oh, we discussed that later too, and then I move it forward, and then all of a sudden it's like, eh, 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 and, and we're tilted, more tilted, oh, 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 the, the color changes. <laughs>